If your skin could talk, what would it say about your kidneys? Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton. I want you to imagine this. You're in the bathroom, putting on lotion again, wondering why your skin is so dry, why your legs itch like crazy at night, and why your eyes look puffy even though you slept. Most people blame age, weather, or allergies, but sometimes, your skin is quietly saying, your kidneys are in trouble. So today, I'm going to walk you through the five skin changes that can be warning signs of kidney damage, what's happening mechanistically under the hood, and how improving your metabolic health, often with low-carb keto or carnivore lifestyles, can help slow or stabilize the damage. And spoiler, the answer is not just drink more water and use better lotion. And if you're new here, I'm a board-certified family and obesity medicine doctor. Around here, we're not just chasing lab numbers. We're chasing root causes. So if that sounds like your kind of medicine, like, subscribe, and maybe even put a heart in the comments so we can get this message to more people. Let's start with a quick kidney crash course. Your kidneys are not just urine factories. They filter your blood, clearing toxins like urea and creatinine. They balance electrolytes like sodium and potassium, regulate fluid, help control blood pressure, and activate vitamin D. They even help you make red blood cells. When they start to fail. Those wastes and hormones don't just stay politely in the bloodstream. They spill over into tissues, irritate nerves, inflame blood vessels, and change how your sweat and oil glands function. And because your skin is your largest organ, it often becomes the billboard that something much deeper is wrong. Let's talk about sign number one, extremely dry, rough skin. Yes, dry skin can come from winter air or hot showers, but in chronic kidney disease, we often see a very specific pattern called xerosis, rough, scaly, tight skin, sometimes with small cracks that even get infected. Mechanistically, as kidney function drops, uremic toxins build up and the sweat and oil glands don't work properly. The skin barrier is damaged. Imagine a brick wall where the mortar is crumbling. Water escapes, irritants sneak in, and the surface dries and cracks. So if a person with diabetes, high blood pressure, or known kidney issues tells me, Doc, my skin has become crazy dry. I don't just tell them to buy thick lotion. I start thinking about what their filtration is doing. And by the way, that common advice, just drink more water, is not always safe in kidney disease. Many people with poor kidney function actually need to limit fluids, not increase them. That's why labs and a conversation with your clinician matters. Sign number two, relentless itching, what we call uremic pruritus. This isn't a little itch from a bug bite. This is the kind of itch that keeps you up at night leave scratch marks on your arms, back, or legs, and makes you feel like you're crawling out of your skin. Why does this happen? As kidney function declines, toxins and inflammatory molecules irritate nerve endings in the skin. There's also a shift in the way your nervous system and opioid receptors process itch and pain. So the signals get amplified. And here's the metabolic twist. That itch disrupts sleep. Poor sleep raises cortisol. Higher cortisol worsens insulin resistance. More insulin resistance pushes your blood sugar and blood pressure higher. High sugar and high blood pressure damages the kidneys further. So a skin problem can actually feed back into the very process that's destroying the filters. Sign number three, rashes, bumps, and even painful skin lesions. In advanced kidney failure, we see small itchy bumps that merge into rough plaques. In more serious cases, there can be purplish spots, painful ulcers, and areas of blackened skin. Mechanistically, there are three big buckets. One, uremic skin disease, chronic inflammation, scratching, and toxic buildup damage to skin. Two, calciphylaxis. Calcium and phosphate start depositing in small blood vessels in the skin. The vessels narrow, the tissue loses blood flow, and skin literally begins to die. It's extremely painful and carries a high risk. Three, infections. Impaired immunity and constant scratching open the door for bacteria and fungal infections. That's not try a different soap territory. That's your internal chemistry is so off that your blood vessels and skin are under attack. Sign number four, puffiness and swelling leading to edema. If you wake up with puffy eyelids, if your socks leave deep lines around your ankle, if your rings suddenly feel tight and your weight jumps up overnight, your body may be holding onto fluid. In kidney disease, the nephron
microns, the tiny filters, can excrete sodium and water effectively. Your body responds by turning on hormones like the renin-angiotensin system and ramping up the sympathetic nervous system. That means more sodium reabsorption, more water retention, and higher blood pressure. If you're also losing albumin protein in your urine, the pulling power that keeps fluid inside the blood vessels drop. Fluid leaks into tissues, under the eyes, in the legs, in the hands, sometimes in the lungs. When someone has swelling, foaming urine, and rising blood pressure, I'm thinking kidney function until proven otherwise. Sign number five changes in skin color and overall appearance. People with advanced kidney disease often develop a yellow, gray, or sallow skin tone. Some areas may darken, especially where the sun hits, while others look usually pale because the kidneys aren't making enough urethropoietin. So red blood cell production drops and anemia develops. In severe untreated cases, you can even see a white, powdery coating called uremic frost. That's urea crystals from sweat sitting on the skin surface. Thankfully, we don't see that often anymore, but it's a dramatic sign of how far things can go. So let's zoom out. Dry, scaly skin, relentless itching, rashes and ulcers, puffiness and swelling, color changes. These aren't random cosmetic annoyances. They're signs of a body whose filters are failing. Now the key question, why are the filters failing? In 2025, the big drivers of chronic kidney disease are type 2 diabetes, chronic high insulin, high blood pressure, and obesity. High blood pressure and high insulin cause tiny blood vessels and filters in the kidney to overwork. You get glomerular hyperfiltration, inflammation, and scarring. Over time, the kidney goes from overperforming to burning out. This is where a lower carb, ketogenic, or carnivore diet, whole food approach comes in. Not as magic, but as mechanistic therapy. We now have randomized controlled trials showing that low carb or higher protein lower carb diets in people with type 2 diabetes and early kidney disease can improve blood sugar, weight, and blood pressure without worsening kidney function over the course of the studies. In some people with abnormally high filtration, glomerular filtration rate actually moves back toward normal, suggesting less stress on the filters. And in real world follow-up, in my clinic, when people with stage 3 or 4 kidney disease are carefully supervised on a very low carb diet, many see weight drop, blood pressure improve, diabetes control improve and kidney function stabilize instead of sliding downward. So when someone says, isn't low carb bad for your kidneys? I always come back to context. If you already have advanced kidney disease, you need a clinician to guide you. But if you're talking about preventing or slowing damage driven by hyperinsulinemia, obesity, and uncontrolled diabetes, the evidence leans in favor of better metabolic control, not worse. So what should you do if some of these skin signs sound familiar? Number one, don't ignore them. Ask your clinician to check your kidneys serum creatinine, EGFR, and a urine albumin to creatinine ratio at a minimum. If possible, ask about a cystatin C for an even clearer picture. Number two, address the root causes. That means cutting back on sugar and refined carbs, reducing ultra-processed foods, prioritizing real protein and healthy fats, and working on blood pressure with lifestyle first. Weight loss, salt awareness based on your kidney status, stress management, and sleep. Number three, if you already have CKD, work with a clinician who understands both kidneys and metabolism. Medicines and even dialysis have their place, but I've seen itch improve, swelling go down, and labs stabilize when we treat the metabolic fire that started the whole process. Your skin is not just a cosmetic surface, it's a messenger. If it's sending you dry, itchy, puffy, dis colored signals. Don't just buy a new cream. Check your kidneys. Check your lifestyle and start moving from disease management towards prevention and healing. And if you made it to this point in the video, thank you. And do me a favor, share it with someone who has diabetes, high blood pressure, or unexplained skin issues. Hit like, make sure you're subscribed, and then check the description for more videos where we dig deeper into insulin, low carb eating and kidney health. Your skin is talking. Let's listen and then actually act on what it's saying.